So fresh off their first one of the season, a homecoming of sorts for Bowling Green Scott Lefflers. We welcome in Michael Burwell from the Toledo Blade, the Bowling Green beat writer. Michael, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. We'll get into the Michigan matchup in a moment. Let's, let's start, though, with the win over Eastern Illinois. Both quarterbacks continue to play. Both quarterbacks will continue to play, but we are starting to see a little bit of a separation. Yeah, yeah. Connor Bazelak played most of the game, and he looked really, really good. I mean, a nine-day difference from the Liberty game. Obviously, the competition was not the same as the Liberty game, but he completed his first 12 passes, threw for over 300 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He only had five incompletions. Uh, his offensive line really did well. He had all day to throw, and, and BG put him in some pretty – high percentage situations, you know, very short passes to the tight end, screen passes to the running back. They had tons of yards after catch, yards after catch. Almost everything was a yard after catch. I think they only attempted two passes over 20 yards. So Bazelak looked really, really good. Camden North came in for a couple plays, and it was, it was running plays. I mean, he was, he's a mobile quarterback. They'll try to use him in that way. But I think Connor Bazelak kind of – separated himself a little bit last week. Let's stay on the ground. As you pointed out earlier this week in the Blade, Terry on Stewart, limited touches, but he made the most of when he touched the ball. Right, he really did. He had a couple huge runs, 18 yards, 17 yards, 15 yards, and they are hard-nosed runs. I mean, he's getting hit either at the line of scrimmage or a few yards downfield, and he's just bouncing off players. It's really fun to watch him, and he converted both of his one-yard touchdown runs pretty, pretty easily, but... He's played 26 snaps through two games. He's their leading rusher. He has all the talent in the world. I mean, I guess it's working. I mean, they have a lot of they have a lot of talent at running back, at wide receiver. I mean, all these guys need to get the ball, and I guess, you know, might as well try to keep everyone healthy for when, you know, later in the season and everything. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Obviously, similar situation from week one where there's a big talent gap discrepancy between Liberty in Eastern Illinois' offense, but the Bowling Green defense, did you see signs of improvement from the Falcons on that side? I did, yeah. Th their, their pass rushing ability just looked really, really good. I mean, Liberty game, they were able to you know, get to the quarterback. They weren't able to sack the quarterback very well, but they had five sacks against Eastern Illinois. I, I thought they did really well in pass rush, and that's saying something considering some of the players they lost from last year, like a Carl Brooks and everything. So... Uh, Defense, defense looked good. Eastern Illinois was able to move the ball at times and move it pretty easily, but some big plays from BGSU's defense, you know, a couple of sacks in a row, then an interception a couple of plays later. They did make some pretty big plays when they needed to. Falcons and Wolverines on a Saturday night. Michigan offensively, we've gotten used to that being a run-heavy offense. In the first two games, teams have been stopping the run, and J.J. McCarthy's been beating them through the air. Is Bowling Green going to try and sell out to stop Corum and Edwards, or are they going to be maybe go a little bit more even up? I think they're going to try to stop the run game. Uh, Scott Leffler in his press conference today kind of mentioned, you know, you need to stop one, you know, either running game or, or the passing game. And, and I, I think I think try to look for them to maybe slow down one of those aspects. If anything, maybe the running game and, and – force McCarthy to win it, but obviously he's been doing pretty good with that. So, I mean, either way, it is an extremely tough task for BGSU. I mean, just, I mean, Michigan's number two in the country. I mean, they have all the talent in the world and NFL caliber talent. So BG has their hands full, obviously, this weekend. And that Michigan defense has been very opportunistic. They've done a great job of forcing turnovers. BG did a better job with that against the Eastern Illinois, but again, that, that level of competition is going to ramp up drastically. Right, absolutely, absolutely. They had no turnovers against Eastern Illinois. That's a huge positive. They only had six penalties, which I feel is even more impressive. I mean, this is a team that has had a lot of 15-yard penalties, you know, just the silly plays, but last week they looked really, really good in that department. You know, very, very level-headed game for them. They're gonna they're gonna need that against Michigan. I mean, they can't they can't shoot themselves in the foot with bad penalties, bad mistakes. I think you're gonna see just BGSU high percentage plays like they had against Eastern Illinois. You know, try to get the ball into your playmakers' hands immediately. You know, obviously the defensive line that they're gonna face is gonna be enormous. How long does Connor Bazelag have to throw? I mean, I think they're gonna try to put the team into situations where 
they can get rid of the ball quickly. They can just get it into their playmakers' hands. Have you gotten a sense of the Bowling Green mindset going into Ann Arbor? Obviously, you're going to have a little bit of confidence coming off of a victory, but are, are they going into this game thinking, oh, let's just escape not getting hurt, or did they think they can shock the world here? <sighs> That's a good question. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think they can I think they want to just be able to do some things positively. I think they want to come out, you know, better than when they started. You know, they want to I mean, this is a national stage for them. This is a big time stage. This is the highest ranked team that they've ever faced in in program history. They want to be able to do some things and do it well. But I mean, obviously the task at hand is enormous. Obviously staying healthy is going to be extremely enormous too, but but I I think they just want to they want to be able to execute in some phases and some things that is going to bode well for MAC play. Falcons never want to use Toledo as an example, but the Rockets, of course, did go up to Ann Arbor and knock off Michigan in 2008. I want to thank our guest tonight, Michael Burwell from the Toledo Blade. You can read all of his Bowling Green coverage online and in the print editions of the Blade. Michael, thank you. Thank you.